Uh, this is your not uh, your first time in Romania. You've been uh, a couple of times here. What uh, do you know about our country and uh, the Romanian public? Um, just know that it's uh, quite a beautiful country, and the people here they got a, a desire to participate at live performances. You know, I know a few things. You know that I see on the TV about you know that people say in England about countries but I don't take too much notice of it because most of what they say on TV is not very representative usually I find TV uh, a little misleading so I, I prefer to come here and and just get an experience you know from the people themselves uh, last month you've uh, re released the collected box what can you tell us about it? Um, I think about a year and a half ago, um, Universal in Germany were looking to put out a greatest hits record. Um, and it was just looking a little cheesy. And uh, so we just said to them, look, why do, you know, we, we, we're up for the idea, but let's do something that's more quality and more in-depth, that's more worthwhile for the fans and that. Um, and so they contacted uh, Universal in the UK and uh, found out if they were up for it. Um, and they were up for it. So uh, basically the box set is all of our albums so far, like seven, uh, seven albums, and then there's uh, uh, remixes and rare remixes, some new tracks that we've done and um, some tracks that were never released, you know, throughout our history that people never heard. Some of them in demo state, you know, so uh, it's quite an in-depth uh, profile of our music, you know, to this point. Uh, what can you tell us about this tour that you've started in support of this uh, release? Well, this tour is, uh, you know, we're playing a lot of music from Connected on the tour. Um, there's music from most of our albums that we're performing and we're also performing tracks that uh, people never heard before including a tune that we've just uh, has just come out on a German label a Berlin label called Kinda Music it's a track we've done with Adam Port yeah, I've listened to that track. It's yeah called Place yeah and it's, uh, it's doing quite well it's, it's in the Beatport charts and stuff uh, you know, check it out, it's a, it's a new tune. This means that uh, in uh, the next future, uh, our next LP of Stereo and Seas will come out? Um, yeah, maybe, maybe next year. We don't really, we, we've, we've, we wanted to do something uh, to change the way we were doing things. Um, and we thought this was a good point to do it. Now that this box sets out, it feels like it's a, a new chapter for us. And in a lot of ways, we want to go back to our roots of how we started, which was making underground dance music, which is what we did back in the 80s. You know, that's what we did then. Uh, and make 12 inches and, you know, sort of uh, make, do, do it simple. And so I think we're going to do that for a while. Uh, how did you start uh, your career and uh, how d what drove you to follow a uh, musical career? I can't really describe it. Um, just ever since I started playing the guitar, I was about 11. Um, I knew I wanted to do music. And although it didn't go down very well with my family, you know, um, because they didn't think it was a proper job, which, fair, fair enough, you know, it's a bit risky. And you could, you know, it is a risky, a risky venture. <laughs> um, but I don't know, I just wanted to do it, you know, and uh, there was nothing else really that would uh, fulfill me in the same way. And I just, I just, I just didn't want to stop doing it. What are your feelings about Connected LP and uh, what were uh, your thoughts back then when you've done it? <clears throat> I think uh, we, we, 
I thought it was a special record, um, but then that was our third album. Um, so all the time going up to that, it felt like a, a steady process, you know, like like something was brewing, you know. I, I, I knew something was going to happen. I, you know, it was a nice feeling. It was almost like just knowing that I, you know, I didn't feel like I had to force anything. I was just, you just knew something was happening. You couldn't put your finger on why or or what it was, but you just uh, almost like it was written somewhere inside your gene. You know that like this, you know, something's gonna kick off for you, and. Um, and the way the, the record came about was it was a very natural process. Um, you know, we, we, did, we did write a lot of that material in a, quite a short space of time. So it was a, it was a wave of creativity that, that made it materialise. And um, looking back on it, we play a lot of those tunes in the set now and uh, it's really enjoyable to play the music, you know, because we haven't played a lot of tunes for 20 years. And so to come back and play them again, it's uh, it's a it's a it's a nice process, you know. It's we enjoy doing it. Um, yeah, it's like someone who makes things out of wood. They love, you know, they love stroking it and making it smooth. And you know, it's like that when we're doing when we're performing the tunes. You know, it's like you know, I get on the mic and I I really enjoy the rhymes and and doing it. It's a, it's a nice thing to do. Yeah, I, lo I love the job I got. It's a great job. Yeah. Uh, since you've started this uh, project, Stereo MCs, it's been almost uh, three decades. If uh, you will define uh, these decades in matter of music, general music, how will you define each one of them? The 80s, 90s and uh, the 2000s? What, in terms of music as a whole? <clears throat> well, to keep it short, I'd say eight, the 1980s was where music had got very bland after punk rock, because punk rock was so explosive. Um, music got very bland, I thought, and it was really the electro music and the, the rap music and the dance music which revolutionised music again. and set really set a new landmark for a stamp for how music was going to move on I think the 90s was where different forms of music started assimilating out of the rap and the dance music you know you started getting drum and bass and rave music and and different different mutations was coming out of the basic um, embryos, you know what I mean? And uh, I mean, when, when we started in the 80s, there was one dance chart, just one, and all of the dance tunes went in that dance chart. Now there's, I mean, for, for house music alone, there's probably, I mean, Lord knows how many charts there are just for house music. You know, so it's the vastness of dance music and its influence, really, that was when the 90s was, you started to realise what was actually going on, that all music was becoming um, influenced by the, the sort of way dance music was grooving. Like nobody wanted to be left behind, everybody wanted a piece of the action. And I think now, uh, 2000, um, I think it's where a, a sort of new, a new generation of, of um, it's where the new generations, new generation are kicking off, where people really, they, they don't, a lot of people making the music now, they don't have a concept of what it was like when, say, I was kicking off making music and what it, and what, 
it sort of meant to me as a real as a real thing where everything you did you held something real you know you had an instrument or you had a record and everything was done with tape and microphones and you couldn't look at it now people they they don't have a concept of that well not everybody but a lot of people their concept of music now is a waveform that you can watch and you make music by looking into it on a grid and perfecting it um, and I think there's a new generation of people who they've probably grown up with that and who are learning to feel in a way that we that for me I had to feel because there was no other way you learnt, you did music by feeling but now people I think they're kicking back into feeling they've, they've been born with computers and being able to look at your music and make it by dunk 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 putting things on a graph and now they're closing their eyes and they're feeling it because it's better not to look sometimes it's better just to listen and feel it and um, and now you've got different sorts of music coming out electronic music which uh, you would go I don't know how he's done that but it feels different to all the other grooves it should feel the same but it doesn't it feels different and you can tell when you listen to a certain guy's music a bit like way back in the day that you could tell when Marley Marl had done a hip-hop tune you know what I mean or um, <coughs> uh, Gangstar you know when when they would produced the tune you could tell by the feel of it who'd made the tune and now I'm getting that feel again by some of the producers saying in some of the house music kind of going you know because you used to still get that in the 90s as well some of the producers you know and um, like Moody Man and people like that and then I think for a while music became quite you, you kind of went yeah it's all, it's all right but I don't know who the hell it is you, you know what I mean There's a lot of a lot of music was very much like you could just there was yeah there was a lot of music that sounded the same and I think that there are now people coming through that I, I go all right I know who that is you know I can't remember the guy's name but I know who that is cause it, the feel of what he's doing and I think that's a sort of um, um, growing up of this uh, you know in a in a sort of in a, a feeling sort of way maybe a spirit in the in the electronic music is is growing up <laughs> 